We're here in Indonesia as part of a USAID funded project to build capacity through training and education. The title of our, our project is Learning from Disaster, Perspectives from the US and Indonesia. We are working with several Indonesian universities, including Institute Technology Bandung, Gajah Mada University, and Islamic University of Indonesia. We are here in Indonesia because Hawaii and Indonesia share many of the same hazards. We both have earthquakes and tsunamis and many active volcanoes in Indonesia as we have an active volcano in uh, Hawaii on the Big Island as well too. So that there are really great opportunities to share knowledge and experiences with regard to hazards and how we manage them. We look at the science of disasters, the physical science, as well as the social science, the impacts of disasters on communities and households and, and how we respond to them and how we recover from disasters and how we rebuild communities that have been damaged by uh, hazards and threats such as volcanoes and, and earthquakes. Volcano, uh, flooding and also landslide always happen in Indonesia in everywhere. Every year, everywhere from the west to the east. So the training is very important. The information about disaster reduction should go down to the community level, to the families, to the children, so that we have a culture change within the mindset and reducing risk among the community. Disaster risk recovery, I think, is very important uh, because it's going to be like to increase our resilience uh, in facing disaster. As we know, also Indonesia is uh, prone, the most prone disaster uh, country in the world. Well, as we have done uh, the last three years, we have been uh, collaborating between Islamic University of Indonesia, Gajah Mada University, and University of Hawaii at Manoa. And we have a lot of, uh, lot of programs. Like last year, we have been working on uh, Indonesia Symposium. This year, we have uh, this workshop. Uh, program and hopefully in the next years we will have a similar or maybe different program on this DRR. This has been an excellent opportunity to collaborate with our colleagues from Indonesia. We have a very strong partnership with many different faculty members and uh, we've had the opportunity to train and work with government officials from the national government the provincial government, local governments, those who are involved in emergency management and disaster response and recovery, as well as many NGOs, international NGOs that have joined us as part of this training effort. The first week we spent in Bandung, where our emphasis was on all hazards. In addition to the University of Hawaii faculty, Kem Lowry and Dolores Foley, we also had Gavin Smith from the University of North Carolina, who gave presentations on disaster recovery, drawing upon his experience in North Carolina and Mississippi. In addition to the lectures and presentations and small group exercises, we took a field trip to Merapi Volcano, where we saw the effects of the devastating eruption that occurred in uh, 2010. Yesterday we had a really dramatic and condensed picture of the 2010 eruption of Merapi, its impacts and then the recovery, the bounce back of the local communities. Uh, we saw first the site of uh, one of the villages devastated by the hot clouds of gas and ash which came down the southern flanks of the volcano and then we moved dramatically to where that village and seven other villages had been re relocated. And at the new site, the notion is, let's not just build quickly to give people a home, but build in a strong way, which actually enhances the quality of life. And so we saw in the new village, dramatic improvements to, to the lifestyle of those villages. And it's a lesson in the short term, I think, um, for us in America and across all of the, the, the portion of the world affected by volcanoes. But in the long term, there's going to be a very fascinating 
contrast between those villages that have relocated and the three villages which remain high on the flanks of the volcano, where for a variety of reasons, personal and uh, economic, villages have chosen to remain in the danger zone, in the red, red zone on the volcano. The other huge impression that it made on, on the team was the resilience of the economy, the ability to diversify the entrepreneurial nature of uh, local people who have effectively replaced, at least in the short term, an agricultural economy with an economy that's focused on volcano tourism and on sand and gravel mining. And that to me was, was so spectacular, the notion that basically whole communities would readjust and actually take advantage of circumstance rather than being victims to basically profit from it. The mining operation is taking place in the vicinity of the large Sabo dams, the, the, the dams which act as giant filters to pull the large boulders out of the moving lahars, out of the moving flows of water and rock, reducing their ability to damage facilities downstream, the, the temple complex, the airport are, are all downstream, the soccer stadium from this. So the problem of course is those large boulders fall out at the dam but then of course they block the river for the next eruption. The sand and gravel mining operation which is proceeding at an enormous rate is effectively preparing the, the valley for the next event. So on one hand there's an economic viability to what, what's being done but on the other hand there's also a social necessity to do that as well. We're here as part of this USAID funded project to build capacity through training. We have great partners with our Indonesian universities and we have tremendous opportunities to uh, assist in the building of resilient uh, communities through training. Many different groups from the uh, academic institutions to the community groups that we met with to the NGOs and government agencies indicated uh, the need for more training and education related to disaster risk reduction. I think there are tremendous opportunities to learn from these disasters, to work together to build resilient communities. The general training for the disaster risk reduction is very important. For example, like what you are doing now in ITB, uh, introducing about like not only the planning, but also like the post or pre-disaster recovery, SLF other preparedness issue, and then like the early warning and then climate change. So this is a kind of the global information regarding disaster reduction is important. This past training that we have uh, where we learned uh, from disaster management both from the US and Indonesian perspective, it actually is, uh, is really good uh, for us uh, to uh, broaden our uh, insights about how to deal with, with disaster in a, a different scale and uh, with different uh, type of hazard. Uh, we are uh, sitting in the ring of fire. Uh, we experience a lot of disasters and we uh, have so many islands, uh, uh, local governments that need capacity building. So it is very important uh, to try to uh, level the, the capacity uh, of the local governments, especially to, uh, in the event of disaster. I need a workshop about the uh, apply of DDR in a small island, especially in my area, because typically uh, Maluku is a small island, so very different compared to the, the big uh, island especially in Indonesia. So uh, very important to know the effect, or the knowledge about DDR in my islands, in my place. This training is very important for me because uh, I can learn about uh, comprehensive planning uh, from the urban planner perspective, and also to collaborate and integrate that in a uh, the most recent and updated data policy related to um, climate change adaptation in Indonesia. So, um, integrated planning and um, updated uh, policy and regulations. Because we work at the community and also government level, I think it's, it's important to have um, more disaster management related training. 
So it's more, it's uh, not only response and recovery, but how to prepare uh, all stakeholders prior to disaster. The disaster response training is is important. Um, given the fact that we are living, the Indonesian living in the ring of fire, it is uh, very important for people to know about it. And the disaster recovery training is also important, but to me maybe it's the target audience maybe more to the practitioner, government, the local NGO and um, all the stakeholders that will um, help or will serve the community to get back to their normal life before the disaster happened. I want to acknowledge and thank our many partners and colleagues from Institute Technology Bandung, from Gajah Mada University, and Islamic University of Indonesia for working with us to develop and deliver our training courses here in Indonesia. I want to thank USAID for their support of this project and our team, both here in Indonesia uh, and back at the University of Hawaii, who made all of this possible.